I bless God this evening. I thank my pastor for giving me this opportunity. <coughs> Excuse me. I thank Reverend Gloria Jenkins for choosing me. And I bless the name of Jesus for choosing me. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I have been given the task this evening of preaching the word of God from Psalms 139, 16. And it reads as follows. You saw my unformed body all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. I'd like to read it from the, from the King James Version. That was the NIV Version. King James says, Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in that book all my members were written which in continuance was fashioned when as yet there were none of them. I would like to consider the subject being the center of God's focus. Being the center of God's focus. Amen. What it means to be the apple of God's eyes. I believe it means that we are the center of God's focus. There are a few verses in the Old Testament that discuss the apple of God's eyes. So let's start by talking about what the apple of God's eye is within a biblical context. Let's start by talking about what it means. In the ancient Hebrew, the word ishan is used for apple. And it is connected to the root word ish. And we all know us Bible heads that ish in the Hebrew means man. When looking at the etymology of the word, we find that Ishan is known as the loom man of the eye. Essentially, the apple of the eye is the pupil. The pupil is what enables you and I to see and be seen. If you look someone straight in the eye, you will see your reflection looking back at you. That's an example of being a little man of the eye. It means you are in the center of the person's focus and they are the center of your focus. I believe this is what God was saying to David in this passage of scripture. Being the apple of God's eyes mean we are the very center of his focus. My first point is God is a personal God. David said God saw his unformed substance before he was born. God had his eyes personally on David. David was the apple of God's eye. But not only David the apple of God's eye, so are you and I. 
I come to encourage you this evening. God has perfect eyesight. He saw us and made uh, each of us differently. We are each unique. We are made in God's image. Hallelujah. That's shouting news. To know that me and you are made in God's image. David said God got up and personal with him. God looked at him and his eyes beheld his shapeliness. God looked at David and saw what he was before he was. Even though in man's eyesight, we can't see beyond what we can see, God has perfect eyesight. Hebrew 4.13 says everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Lay naked and bare before God. Eyes. That being said, let's look at how significant you and I to God. Because we are significant. You and I exist in the man of God in the mind of God eternally before the foundation of the world. Long before God made us fearfully and wonderfully. God knew what you and I would be like and what you would do and not do. God, I saw David in his embryonic undeveloped, unfinished stage. But I'm so glad David shows us just how personal God really is. God the Father is a spirit. So that means that his eyes are spiritual. So he sees beyond what is and what will be. He looks at your and my unformed body as his creation, full of a potential to glorify him. That's the reason he made us. He made us for one purpose, to give him glory. Then God personally shaped and brought our bodies to life. So we see through David's eyes just how personal God is. God has personally ordained our lives. All of our days are numbered. All of them are seen by God and written in his book. And you don't have to believe me. Let's look at the scripture. Paul says in Ephesians 2.8, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now, you may ask the question, how do we come to know what the works that God has prepared in advance for us to do? Good question. God saw you and I undeveloped. But I'm so glad he didn't leave us in that stage. Because God is the personal God. He loves us and he just didn't stop there. Hallelujah. He is also a provisional God. God is the personal God. God also the provisional God. Not only does he see, but he provides. What is the meaning of God's provisional care? It means that God in his divine wisdom 
has provided for all of humanity our needs for all of our situations. There's no problem, there's no concern, and there's no situation that we may encounter that God has not made provision for. That even includes sin. We know there are consequences to our decision. If you choose to obey God and his commandments, blessing follows. If we choose to disobey God and his commandments, punishment follows. God loves us, but he's a just God. And Peter, 5, 7, we are encouraged to cast all of our cares on him. God's love, God's nature, and God's sovereignty allows him to make such requests because he is able. <laughs> Hallelujah. But not only is he able, he's willing. But not only is he willing, he is true to his promise to provide for all our needs. Philippians 4.19, when you get a chance, read it. Support this fact. If the question was raised, why must believers suffer? We go to the word in Romans 8.28, it encourages us that all things work together for good, which is to say that we as believers suffer in this life, and we will. God brings good out of our suffering, out of our trials, out of our afflictions, out of our persecution. We are not exempt. But God is conforming us to the likeness of his son, Jesus Christ. And the end results is that he'll be glorified. As all believers, we are the elect of God and in the corporate body of Christ. We are his church. It can be in conclusion that whatever we as believers may experience in this life, God is present through his spirit. You do know I know you know that God left and, and sent the Holy Spirit and that Holy Spirit lives in you and I. So whatever God has for you and I, he wrote it in the book. And, I, and he saw the, the beginning from the end. He is an all-knowing God. He wrote it in his book because he ordained all our days. And he knew we needed instructions on how he wanted us to love one another, but not only love one another, to love him with our whole heart, mind, and soul. He not only is he a personal God, not only is he a provisional God, but he is a God with a plan. Just like with David, he had a plan. He wrote about David's member before they came to be. Whatever was in God's mind came to be. In the day he created you and I. Jesus in human form came to be. In Mary's womb, when she was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. But he already existed as the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. 
to take away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. The good news is that everything God planned will come to be. Jesus has promised to return for his church, you and I, in a moment of a twinkling of an eye, it will come to be. Because God is not only a personal God. God is not only a provisional God. He's not only has a plan, but he is true to his promise. Romans 8, 39, 38 and 39 says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor in other creature, any other creative thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Bless God's holy name. I thank him for allowing me to be in the center of his focus. Amen? Amen. Now, God cares for you and I because he put us in the center of his focus. There may be someone here today under the sound of my voice who doesn't realize or understand God cares for them. God said in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. That's what God wants to do for you today if you don't know him. And the reason he wants to do it is because he is a loving God. And God, the scripture in John 3, 16, 17 said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Put your name in whosoever if you don't know Jesus. God desires that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That's his desire for you today. And he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, the scripture I just read to you, that God died for you, and all you have to do is ask him to come into your heart to save you, to give you life and life more abundantly. Now, they're about to put a number on the screen. That number is 301-909-8411. You call that number or you can text SAVED. And if you call that number, we have counselors waiting to lead you to Jesus. <laughs> Again, that number, 301-909-8411. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Claude. Hallelujah. Thank you for those yeah. words of encouragement. Thank Amen. You. He knew me. 
Amen. Yes, sir. Before I was even formed. Yes, sir. And he, he had the plan for my life. He recorded it. Yes, sir. We thank God for that word tonight. Thank you. Thank you for being obedient to the Lord, for giving Amen. us what the Lord has given to you. The center and of God's truth. Amen. Amen. And we thank the Lord for all of you who have joined us again for our New Day Revival. 30 minutes, a time of encouragement. And by the way, uh, Pastor Claude, what a wonderful selection you chose by uh, Tasha Cobb. Uh, um, that, that was really appropriate for this uh, message tonight. So we thank God. you. Praise God. So again, we thank you for joining us. And uh, just one more time, if you um, enjoyed that word and you want to accept Christ as your savior, or if you want to rededicate your life, call this number on the screen. We have counselors standing by who are willing, ready, and able to help you and guide you into all uh, truth and to lead you Amen. and guide you into a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And Pastor, I just want you to know, you messed me up with that song. I have so many reasons to rejoice. So many reasons. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, pastors, in your hands, close us out. Give us the benediction. We're right on time. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I bless God. I thank him. Now praise him. And in Jude 1, 24 and 25, it says, Now unto him that is able to keep you and I from falling and to print and to present you faultless before his the precious, the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. 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 Come on, let Pastor Claude hear it out there. Just say hallelujah. And give God praise for that word Hallelujah. through our chat. Amen. Amen. Thank you all once again for joining. Have a wonderful evening, and uh, we will see you on Sunday at G3, Amen. and then our Sunday service. Amen. Amen. Thank you again, Pastor. We'll talk to you soon. Amen.